Hello, welcome to DIY Missions, where in this episode I'm going to show you how to build your very own word clock. It's a clock that tells you the time in full sentences by lighting up the hidden words within this grid of uh, random letters. Now to build this you're going to need a few components. The heart of this is an Adafruit Neo Matrix, which is an 8x8 grid of NeoPixels already pre-soldered to a PCB. This saves us a lot of soldering. One 330 ohms resistor, an Arduino Nano, a real-time clock or RTC. Uh, I'm using this one. This is a DS3231. Um, of course, you'll find links to all of these parts in the description below. Some electrical wire, a sheet of A4 tracing paper, and then last off, you'll need some plastic to print the printed components. Now, you'll need between five to 600 grams of plastic. Uh, I've printed mine in PLA, and you can print yours in whatever you like. I wouldn't print the main body of this in white, um, but otherwise you can use any color you like. Uh, the more reflective, the better. Let's get started. The first thing we will do is start the first print. The first print might take a while. Uh, it took me about 30 hours, uh, but I set a very small layer height. Uh, I had a layer height of 0.15 millimeters. Um, I don't think you really need this. So if you can't wait, uh, or you're worried your printer might fail during this time, you can choose a higher layer height and this will help the print go faster for you. Whilst our first print is printing, we can begin solving some of the connections. I'm going to be using three different coloured wires so that I can help follow my circuits on the way through. If you have the same colours to hand, that'd be ideal, it'd be a little bit easier to follow. But if not, don't worry, you can do the whole thing in one colour if you need to. Let's measure out about nine centimetres. It doesn't need to be precise. I'm going to try to keep all three the same length. So that's our first three wires. The next thing we need to do is trim off a bit of insulation. So we need to take a bit off both ends. The first thing we'll need is our Adafruit Neo Matrix. Now on the back of here are some labels. You'll see on this side there are three holes labeled D out, five volt and ground. And over here we have ground, five volt and D in, which stands for digital in. These are the three that we want to solder our wires to. Okay, so I'm going to start with my ground wire, which I like to do in green. Let's pop that in there. So they'll go that well. And now our red wire into five volts. And then our last wire connecting to digital in. Now you've completed the first bit, we'll need to add our resistor next. Uh, this is a 330 ohms resistor. So our resistor goes orange, orange, and brown. Orange is the number three, if you look on the resistor chart. So this is three, three, and then the brown one represents how many zeros follow it, which is one. So 330 ohms of resistance. The gold band at the end here uh, represents how accurate uh, or precise this resistor is. Um, gold is absolutely fine for what we're doing. So this needs to be connected to our digital in wire, which is the yellow one. This helps to protect the Neo Matrix uh, when you start up your project in case you have any sort of uh, electrical surge, which could damage the uh, Neo pixels attached to the Neo Matrix. The legs on this are actually quite long, so we'll just trim those off a bit. Once we've finished soldering the wires to the resistor and our Neo Matrix, you can then connect it to the uh, Arduino Nano. Our yellow wire, which is coming from Digital In, wants to connect to this connection here, A6 or Analog 6. Now we're going to be gluing our Arduino Nano face down in the back of our clock later. So let's pop this in from above, pop it into our helping hands. There we go. The green wire that comes from ground 
once connecting to, you guessed it, ground. We've got a ground wire here. We'll pop that in there, flick it over, connect it to our helping hands. And we can solder that one into place. Then our red wire from five volts, you guessed it again, need to solder into the five volt connection on the Arduino Nano. The next item we can solder onto our circuit board is this. It's a RTC or real time clock. Now I'm using a DS3231. Uh, you'll of course find links to this part and all the others down in the description below. Now this allows our sketch to remember the time after it's been powered off. Um, whilst you're connected to the computer, when you start an Arduino sketch, it can take the current date and time that that code was loaded to it and it will keep counting from there on. If we power off our Arduino, then power it back up say on a mains power supply or a battery pack later, the time will be incorrect. So this has got a button battery, so it can continue to count the time when the power is turned off. And when our sketch start up, there's a small line in there which will query our RTC and ask it for the current date and time. So to connect the RTC, we're going to need four wires. They don't need to be as long as the ones we had earlier, so about six centimeters should be absolutely fine. And again, you want to trim off a bit of insulation from each one. So as you can see on our RTC, there are a choice of six connections on the opposite side to the side of the battery. SEL, SDA, VCC and ground are the four that we'll be using. So if you solder a wire to each of these four connections, we'll then get on and connect it to our Arduino in the next states. So that's our four wires attached. Our wires from ground wants to be connected to a ground point and VCC wants to be connected to a 5 volt connection as well. We've got one ground connection here available, which is absolutely fine, but we only have one 5 volt connection here. So the 5 volt connection from our RTC will have to share the same 5 volt line as our Neo matrix. Now we've got two more wires left to connect. Uh, once we've done soldering those, that's all of the soldering complete. Now our wire from SDA, in my case the purple wire, this one wants to connect to analog four on our Arduino. And then our last wire, which goes to SCL, wants to be connected to analog pin number five. And that's it, that's our soldering complete for now. Now that we've finished soldering our electronic components, it's a good idea to upload our sketch and see if everything's working as we intended before we carry on. Plug your Arduino Nano into a USB port on your personal computer. Open the sketch, um, you'll find a link in the description below where you can download the code for this. Upload it to your board. And then once it's finished uploading, we should see some LEDs on our NeoPixel spring into life. There we go. That's good news. So now we know the circuit's working as we intended, we can carry on and build the rest of the physical assembly. There's not much left to do now. For this, we'll take our electronic components and our first 3D printed part. We have six pins here, which line up with these six pin holes you'll find in the Adafruit Neo matrix. Now the orientation matters on this. You can tweak it later in code, but it's best we get it right first time. So the corner with the three wires soldered onto it wants to be attached in this location here. So this is the corner with the smallest hole in it. So if we slide this over here, you should be able to just drop it down into place. Now to secure it, we're going to need some hot melt glue. There 
There we go. It's easy as that. Now we'll glue the stand onto the back of our clock. Uh, to do this, we also need to glue into place the various electronic components where they need to be held in the stand. Now, the first thing to attach is our Arduino Nano. Now for our clock to work, we need to be able to power it using this USB port. So in the back of this wall is a hole here. What you'll need to do is to glue it into place with the USB port remaining accessible through this hole like this. So we'll apply some hot melt glue to the underside here and then we'll move quickly to attach it. Then we need to uh, rearrange the RTC clock down here in the bottom section. So should bend the wires around apply some glue. Check one more time that all of your wires are okay. Uh, some of them may have come loose whilst we've been gluing it all into place. Uh, but if you're quite happy, we can go ahead and position the main clock body over our circuits. Like so. And then we can glue this into place. Just around these edges here. Once that's complete, you'll find your clock can now stand up of its own accord. Now once this glue has cooled down properly, you can go along, you can pick off these strands. It won't look so bad if you just take a few moments to tidy it up. Okay, the next thing we will do is add a piece of tracing paper to the front of our clock. You'll just need one sheet. If we tear one out from our pad, we'll be done with that. Now the easiest way to cut this to size is to take our clock, lay it face down here, lining it up into one corner, draw around the other two faces. One. Now our tracing paper needs to sit just on the inside of this. So when you cut out your lines, cut just on the inside of both lines. Not by too much, just a little bit, but you certainly don't want it to be bigger. Next, we'll use some hot melt glue to hold the tracing paper onto the front of our clock face. So. If you pull on the corners outwards whilst the glue is drying, you'll get a nice, even, taunt sheet on the front. Once we've done that, there's no harm in plugging in the Arduino, powering it up, and seeing if everything is still working as intended. There we go, our clock is still working. Now, every clock needs a face. Ours doesn't have one yet, so let's print that now. I printed mine at 0.2 millimeters layer height. That seems absolutely fine. Um, it's not a particularly long print, and you can print it in any color you like. My one is going to be in black, and then I'll probably print some other colors later. Now that it's complete, we can try it on our clock face. So all we have to do is line it up on the front and drop it into place. As I mentioned, you can also print other clock faces. I've also printed one earlier in a beige color with some uh, copper detail around the edges. So we drop this one down. It really is that easy to change the style of your clock. And if you want to, you can go ahead and design your own clock face. I'll put some dimensions or a link to a technical drawing below, which will show you how it needs to fit onto the back of our clock. And that's the end of our project. So all that's left for me to do is say thank you for watching. If you're interested in any of these other projects, BB-8s, hot wire cutters and drone lap timers, please check out the links in the descriptions below. Otherwise, until next time, ciao for now.